My name is Michael Shaw and I live here in Pichadlikulam in Oroville. Okay, I'm mainly working at present um, on a smart irrigation system um, a, with a two Oroville partners. One is Oroville Consulting, um, Martin Scheffler, and the other is the Centre for Scientific Research. And we work closely with a Scottish university called um, Harriet Watt. And uh, this is basically a software program with minimum hardware that forecasts the irrigation for farm crops over the next 24 hours. The hardware consists of a controller, a microcontroller that was a designed and developed in Oroville. It's a completely Oroville product. And that sends a signal to the cloud saying, I'm here on this farm. And then the water balance model sends a signal back saying, well, this is your irrigation for the next 24 hours. That's all done by cloud communication between the microcontroller uh, and a, eventually a, a computer that sits at Edinburgh University. Uh, we're at the stage of running 20 pilots on this technology, of which about 10 are installed and 10 more will be installed in the next few months. And so we're doing vegetable crops, uh, sugarcane, bananas, cotton, um, a, and some landscaping project, which is basically trees and shrubs. Uh, so these are all the, the systems that will test uh, both the software and the hardware. And we will launch the product onto the market with a new company called Farmhand uh, around about the middle of 2019. The Indian agricultural sector uses 85% of all the water abstracted in India, which is a huge impact on groundwater and aquifers, which are gradually drying up because of over-abstraction. Uh, and secondly, it uses a lot of energy. Farmers get free electrical energy to do pumping, and that takes about 22%, the agricultural sector, of the whole of, um, of India's energy generation. So if we can begin to save on water, and the smart irrigation saves about 70% on water, and uh, we have an increase in yield, uh, which helps the farmer, of course, uh, and uh, reduces the energy, which is also around 70%, then if we can really expand this in a very wide range of farms and farmers, it could have a significant impact uh, on the um, environment, ecology, and also the economics of the Indian agricultural sector. And our typical farm pilot in Tamil Nadu outside of Oroville is three acres. That's the average size of farm. Uh, and most of these farms are in some form of aggregation scheme. So if you get one or two farms adopting it, then there's the opportunity for this to spread out to a whole lot of farms. One, one of the ones we're really excited about uh, is a, um, the Parry organization on sugarcane in Pondicherry, where they have a sugar mill. Uh, uh, Parry is a company which is all over India, and they've got 50,000 farmers in their, in their chain of supply. We're also doing a cotton farm in Gujarat. Uh, and again, the cotton industry is really large in Gujarat. So if we're successful, and I'm sure we will be, then that will be Oroville stretching all the way from Tamil Nadu to Gujarat. Well, I love working with technology, and this is, this is technology. I love working with the university. I've worked with a, um, the Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh for many years, and I'm part of their um, faculty of geoscience. And this year I was really sort of very pleased to be appointed an honorary professor. And we've just in the university putting in a, an application for this technology in Uganda, another one in Nepal, another one in, in, in Colombia, and another one in Chile. And we are also doing our first pilot in China in the first half of 2019. So we see there's a real global application for a technology that's been researched and developed in Oroville to have a very wide reach. I've been a member of the Findhorn Foundation of Scotland for many, many years, and Oroville is a sister community to Findhorn. Our main focus 
for the next few years will be in Oregon uh, within the Pachandikulam community. And we are inspired by that, particularly working with Joss Brooks and the team here, which have got multiple projects uh, that they're, uh, they're, they're, they're starting and also finishing in the field of holistic restoration ecology. And smart irrigation is a little part of that. The great thing about Oroville is it's got 23 farms. Uh, so it's got a significant investment in land uh, and farming and farmers in Oroville. And they vary enormously from Annapurna, which is big farming, with 150 acres or so, to just little farms in some of the smaller communities. So I, I believe that the philosophy is very close to the regenerative agriculture philosophy. Some people would call, call it agroecology, um, which is a growing field of interest in, in Europe, in South America, in, in South Asia, and in Africa. So we're part of a, an international movement that is approaching in a sort of holistic way. Uh, so we need to solve these problems and we need to take the advantage of this approach, uh, which will be, I, I believe, uh, a major step forward uh, for all our countries in the next hundred years. Aravo is a pioneer in this. If you, if you talk to Joss Brooks of Pichandi Kulam, what he did 40 years ago, what it was was restorative uh, ecology, regenerative ecology. He took a, a landscape that was completely eroded, that was just sand, it just was sand when, when we got here in 1979, and you look at it now, and it's a, it's a forest, it's a whole 23 farms, it's a whole green zone, uh, it's, uh, during the 2015 floods, there was very little, if any, flooding in Oroville. Why? Because it's full of trees, it's full of a regen uh, a ecology system.